So a very warm welcome to anyone watching on Facebook. We're here for what would normally be morning prayer, but today is our first Holy Communion since March 2020. So a very warm welcome to you there and to everyone here. So let's just take a moment and we'll begin with the greeting, which of course is A on your pieces of paper. And we just welcome the Lord's presence here with us today. And we know that when we gather, he will be there with us. The Lord be with you. Now we begin with our prayer of preparation, which you'll find as B on the uh, piece of paper. And we say this together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to say, we're not allowed to sing in church behind our masks, but we can speak responses in indoor voices. So that's okay if you weren't sure. Now we come before the Lord with the prayers of penitence. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. So now we say the prayer at thee together. Almighty God, oh, Heavenly Father, let's see, sorry. We have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. It's good to see that you've remembered better than I have. So, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, I haven't given you the Gloria. If you know it, join in. If not, I'll say it on behalf of all of us. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. 
receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Now we're mixing and matching today on the readings. Uh, I've got the Gospel for the Holy Communion today, and I've got the Romans reading from Morning Prayer. Just if you've been following Morning Prayer, we'll continue in that series. So the Gospel reading is from Matthew 8, verses 28 to 34. Matthew 8, verses 28 to 34. When they arrived at the other side in the region of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, if you drive us out, send us into that herd of pigs. He said to them, go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and died in the water. Those tending the pigs ran off, went into the town and reported all of this, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the whole town went out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. I was listening to a talk this morning by John Mark Comer, and he was talking about um, this being a cultural moment. And he's talking about the last sort of century, possibly certainly some of it, the last 20 or 30 years. And he said, we've moved from the place where Christianity, the church, Uh, Christians were in the centre and we've moved to the margins. The church certainly and Christianity as an ideology had influence and we've moved to a place where there's no influence or very little. And we've moved from a point when Clergy, Christians, Christian ideals, the church carried respect. We've moved to a position of disrespect or even being seen as being dangerous. Do these three things concern you? Some of you were nodding and recognising that movement. Well, just looking at our reading today from Matthew, we have these demon-possessed men Well, have you noticed how in the Gospels there's quite a lot of this demon activity? But there's also, at the Incarnation, a huge amount of angelic activity. Because what was happening was through the Incarnation, through the coming of Jesus, the gates of hell were being stormed. And Satan was fighting back. These men were violent, but they came to him. And they didn't come to him to attack him, they came to him to plead with him. Have you come to torture us? What do you want? And if you are going to drive us out, send us over there. And Jesus cast them out with a simple go. For he had the authority. And the people who saw this, the man with authority to drive out demons, what did they do? They didn't congratulate him. They pleaded for him to go away. How does Jesus fit into the above? Was he at the centre or was he at the margins? Did he have influence? with the Pharisees, say? 
Or did they not listen to him? Did he have respect? Well, not only of his followers. They had so little respect for him, they nailed him to a cross. He was seen as dangerous. So what is actually happening here, as we say, is an assault on the gates of hell. It's an ultimate victory, the coming of Jesus. It is the coming of the kingdom, and it is making way for a new creation. And maybe it's a good thing of being on the margin, not having the influence and the power that maybe we've had before. And maybe being disrespected is a sign that our message is one that makes people uncomfortable. It's certainly what Jesus faced. And should we fear these things? No. Because he has the victory. If you've got the man who can cast out demons who are fearful of him, simply with the word go on your side, there's nothing to be afraid of. So in the light of that, can we reflect on that by just listening to Paul's words as he comes to the end of his letter to the Roman church? And we're looking at chapter 15, starting at verse 14. It is he's bringing his letter to a close. It's before the personal greetings at the end. I myself am convinced, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, complete in the knowledge and competent to instruct one another. I have written to you quite boldly on some points, as if to remind you of them again, because of the grace God gave to me to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles with the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God so that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I glory in Christ Jesus in my service to God. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done, by the power of signs and miracles, through the power of the Spirit. So, from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyricum, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ, It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Rather, as it is written, those who were not told about him will see and those who have not heard will understand. This is why I have often been hindered from coming to you. Being in the centre having influence, having respect. It wasn't Paul either. But from his marginal, non-influential, disrespected position, he proclaimed the gospel of Christ, that many would be saved. Let's pray. Father God, let us not treasure our position. Let us not treasure our influence. Let us not treasure the respect of others. Let us treasure alone the salvation that comes through the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray this. In Jesus' name. Amen.
But what follows is a creed. Again, I couldn't have fitted that on a single piece of paper, but if you know it, then please do join in. Um, if you only know the tune, then please hum. And, <laughs> and I'll just say the words of the Nicene Creed. as an affirmation of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So now let's just take a moment just to gather all that we've heard and to lift up our own prayers of intercession for the world, for our community, for our nation, for ourselves, for the church, for those who are on our hearts who suffer in mind, body or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now at this point, I would get you all to stand up and turn to your neighbour and shake their hand or hug them or whatever it is you would normally do at the peace. But we can't, sorry. But you can wave. So, <laughs> so, remaining where we are, if you wouldn't mind, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer another, uh, one another a distanced sign of the peace. Peace be with you.
So we should now do it part D of the piece of paper that you have in front of you. And we'll do prayer A today. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Now there are responses in this prayer, and the response is to you be glory and praise forever. And each time we come to one of those, I'll just say the word together. And if we could say those words. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Together, to you be glory and praise for all. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Together, to you be glory and praise forever. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Together. To you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, and these are at F. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Together, to you be glory and praise forever. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Together, to you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Together. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him, 
and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And then at J we have the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. If you would like to receive communion, if you could just hold your hands out and I'll drop a piece of bread into your hand and I'll be coming to you.
body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now we say the prayer after communion and it's care. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.